president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, said that Russia is ready to return to negotiations with Ukraine based on the agreements reached in Istanbul in 2022. Are we ready to negotiate with them? We have never refused this, but not on the basis of some ephemeral demands, but on the basis of the documents that were agreed upon and actually initialed in Istanbul, Putin said at the Eastern Economic Forum. Putin's statement may indicate a change in his position on peace talks. At the beginning of the summer, the head of the Russian regime called the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces beyond the borders of the annexed regions of Ukraine a precondition for the start of negotiations. After the invasion of the Kursk region, he spoke of the impossibility of such negotiations. And during the lesson, conversations about the important, which Putin held in Kizil, he allowed for the possibility of peace talks with Ukraine in the event of the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces from the territory of the Kursk region. Thus, in just the last few weeks, Putin has already changed his position on the negotiations several times, continuing to reduce his demands on Ukraine. In June, the New York Times published the text of a draft peace agreement developed in the spring of 2022 by delegations from Ukraine and Russia. According to commentators, the terms proposed to Ukraine were unacceptable. The Istanbul Agreement implied a neutral status for Ukraine, but allowed the country to join the EU. The parties also agreed in the document that Ukraine accepts Russia's occupation of Crimea, but does not recognize Russian sovereignty over it. It was assumed that the status of Crimea would be determined within 10 to 15 years after the agreement and Volodymyr Zelensky and Putin were to agree on the status of other territories occupied by the Russian army at a personal meeting. The agreement also introduced restrictions on the size of the Ukrainian army and the number of various weapons. In the spring of 2022, the halt in negotiations, according to the newspaper, was influenced by Russia's attempt to gain veto power over military aid to Ukraine from its allies in the event of a new attack. Last November, the leader of the Ukrainian negotiating team, David Arakamia, cited several reasons why Ukraine refused to sign the treaty. One of them was that Kiev considered the document a ploy that would allow Moscow to rebuild its army and return to fight in Ukraine. Beijing now has the best opportunity to attack Russia since Vladivostok is guarded by only two men and a dog. The Telegraph journalist George Allison emphasized that it is easier for Beijing to tear off a larger piece from Russia than from Taiwan. Moscow will not be able to resist strongly since almost all its forces are in Ukraine. Even before February 2022, the Russian armed forces had almost 5,000 artillery mounts, more than 2,000 tanks and 7,000 infantry fighting vehicles. China has almost the same indicators, but it has not fought with anyone and has not lost any of this. The Russian army has up to 550,000 servicemen, but China has up to 1 million. At the same time, we should not forget about the Navy. China is churning out its warships at such a speed that it could arm the entire world. And the new J-20 fighter has shown the large technological gap between Russia and China. There is no point for China to attack the island now since the US will stand up for Taiwan. However, no one will stand up for the Russian Federation. It is in Vladivostok that the headquarters of the Russian Pacific Fleet is located. It is for this reason that Beijing constantly competes with Moscow. Ellison recalled Putin's words when he said that little members of his family speak Chinese fluently. It is possible that the Russian president is thus preparing the future generation for new realities. The first person to suggest Beijing attack the Russian Federation was the president of Taiwan. Recently, Lai ching to suggested that China use force to return its lands that Russia had once taken away. Instead of suggesting that China take back land from Russia, Taiwan should focus on Beijing's offer of a peaceful reunification. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova stated, When asked to comment on Lai's statement, Zakharova said that the opinions of individual fringe politicians who are fixated on revanchism might be of interest to some but not to us. Lai, who is incited by the Americans to make such statements, should understand that they will not bring anything good to him or the people of Taiwan, she stressed. Zakharova reminded Taipei that Russia and China renounced all territorial claims with each other 
as is stated in bilateral treaties on cooperation and state borders from 2001 and 2004, as well as in other bilateral documents. Russia has consistently adhered to the One China principle and regards the People's Republic of China government as the sole legitimate government of China, he said. The spokeswoman advised Taiwan's administration to pay more attention to the economic situation on the island and take a constructive approach towards the proposals of the People's Republic of China leadership for a peaceful reunification with mainland China. We are confident that our friends in Beijing have the same stance, she added.